Alrighty, welcome to another three on three. Been on a bit of a losing streak lately, and uh, we're gonna snap out of it here. We've got myself, Talisker, and Falcon Eye battle against Quiniac, Team J Bro, and Troll Ascetic, also known as Met. Uh, what do we got? Well, there's a Time Twister, obviously just a good card. There's also an Archon of Cruelty, and there's a Narset. This is from the upcoming Magic Online Cube that. Uh, has some changes like delayed blast fireballs one red red instant deals two damage to each opponent creature they control but if you foretell it and cast it <clears throat> from exile excuse me it deals five instead and it foretells six mana huh also if you cast it off like an expressive iteration it nugs them for five kind of cool card i think i'm inclined to just take archon it works with a lot of stuff it's the best reanimate target i think twister narset palantir are going to be gone probably fatal push maybe Oliphant, I don't know. Maybe I'll get Jar back if I want it. Who knows? All right, well, this is a good pack. This pack has a Demonic Tutor, a Minskin Boo, a Sheldock Isle, a Delta, a True Name, and number six, lucky number six, maybe Delighted Halfling or Mystical Tutor. So I'm probably going to get like a Mannequin or Concealing Curtains back, but I'm going to take Demonic Tutor. It goes so well with Archon. It's kind of a no-brainer. Oh, now I'll probably just take Dark Ritual. When when you can leverage the power of Dark Ritual, it's an amazing card. And the next best card here for me is probably Volcanic Island or K-Command. So Dark Ritual is quite a bit ahead of those. Quiniac, I don't really know much about their drafting preferences. j is probably going to take the Questing Beast only because uh, Lightning Greaves isn't in the pack. But uh, yeah, I'll slam Dark Ritual here. And, hmm, this is an interesting pick as well. So... Lelia is probably the best card, though Flooded Strand's close. I really want this Blood Tithe, but I can't take it here. Is there a chance Blood Tithe comes back? Uh, if I take Flooded Strand, it's slightly higher, because the Red Drafter would decide between those two. But one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's possible Blood Tithe comes back, but not super likely. I do think Lelia is good enough that I should take it over Flooded Strand, though. And, Wow. It's just all action. I guess I still just take Underground Sea here. Kind of wish I'd just taken Flooded Strand now. But there's also like Burst Lightning and Rabble Master. Lorien Revealed I think is a little worse than Underground Sea. Memory Lapse is also really good. Had I taken a Fixer, I guess I'd be more inclined to take that. These packs are just bangers. So even though this is a six-player draft, we're still going to have some what looks like pretty good decks. Let's see. One, two, three, four... Five, six, seven. Yeah, I might even get one of these red cards back. Hmm. I, I think I'm going to pass on both red cards, and I think I'm just going to take the Verdant. It's really close, though. Here I'm going to take him. Him is so good. I think it's better than Deluge. I'd rather have that kind of disruption, especially if I do end up red-black. You end up with enough creature removal. It's also Scrubland Days. Yeah. It seems like black is quite open. Like, I've gotten... Premium black cards, basically four of the five picks I've been passed. Archon, of course, being a first pick doesn't count because no one else had an in input there. And I'm counting Verdant Catacombs as somewhat of a black card. But we'll see. It's I mean, it's possible the Day Loser Scrubland comes back. I, I think Skydiver, Days, Aragorn, Third Path have decent chances. Maybe someone takes Kinnan. I don't know. Oh, Fatal Push and Oliphant came back. So did Narset and Deep Cavern Bat. I think... I think I should take Fatal Push here. It's an, such an efficient card. I even have a fetch land. I'm not even... I'm not, like, locked into playing red by any stretch. I am pretty much locked into playing black. Deep Cavern Bat might actually make another lap. So, so might Doretti. Because I think Narset is almost assuredly going to go. So is Oliphant. Maybe someone wants Haywire Might. Maybe someone specs on Cauldra. There's Deep Cavern Bat. Like, all these cards are playable. I'm going to take Fatal Push. Oh, True Name is still there. So this is, a, this is a little awkward, because True Name is still here and good. But I, I want True Name a lot less than I want one of these black cards. I don't even know which one. I'd be passing J-Bro a True Name. I think that's doable. I could also take it, but it doesn't really fit too well with the way this deck's looking. Also, I think I'm going to take Concealing Curtains over Mannequin. I just, I'm not the biggest makeshift mannequin fan. Oh, and K-Command? Nice, I'll pick that up. That's a great pickup. Over Trinket Mage, Samwise, Dark Depths. Oh, Blood Tithe came back. Perfect. And Firebolt and Pulse still in the pack. Wow. All right, well, Red Block's really open. 
I'm pretty happy with where I'm at here. We'll see what's going to wheel in the Verdant pack. But if I get either Burst Lightning or Rabble Master back, I'll feel like taking the Verdant was, was a good call, especially since we haven't seen any red-black lands go by, and I really want to find one of those if I can. But this is looking like a really good red-black start. I mean, I, I just have nine quality red-black cards plus a fetch land. It's a fantastic start. Oh, huh. This is a really interesting pick. Because the Underground Sea Wield, which I really didn't think was that likely, and there's Burst and Rabble Master in the pack. Honestly, though, I think I'm supposed to take Underground Sea, and the reason is I like both Burst and Rabble Master, but I have good replacements for both. I have tons of playables. Yeah, like Deluge came back, which I'm going to take here, I think. Deluge is still pretty good. Over Skydiver, it's close, but I'll take Deluge. And look, now, I, yeah, I'm going to have a million playables, so having a the outs to play blue black could also be good i think i take bat here i have just taken two more threes and i don't find it ready to be amazing in this kind of deck oh mine collapse is fine though basically i think that i'm not going to miss burst lightning or rabble master that much i'm going to be so flush on black red playables that keeping a the fixing open especially with this verdant for if i either a open like a busted blue card right a time walker and ancestral or b it just ends up that I'm supposed to kind of play a couple blue cards to supplement the reanimator theme. Though, currently I've got exactly one reanimate card and the rest is red-black mid-range, but we'll, we'll see. There's an Atali, so we know about that. Um, yeah, I'm probably going to take Atali. Atali is a great reanimation target. Also, the red-black decks can just cast it, which is nice. Stage for someone's depths. Troll probably won't wheel, but if it does, I'll be happy. There's also Grave Titan, City of Traitors. I imagine Parallax Wave, Stage are going to go. Whoever took Depths, I think, is going to take that, but maybe not. Maybe they'll get greedy. Loran, a lot of good white cards in this pack. But I'm just taking Itali. And this is unfortunate because Swords is the best card in the pack. I just passed a bunch of good white cards. There's a bunch of mid-red cards. Zealous, Magda, Reckless Stormseeker, which I'm happy enough to take eventually but i don't really want a second pick i might just take bone shards here i think it's pretty good with the reanimate theme because now i'll have blood tithe and bone shards as discard outlets have only seen mannequin as far as reanimation spells and i probably get back magda i'm passing a swords but i'm not going to play the swords and i'm also passing hex strengther othari mystic confluence so i don't think hating a swords is really going to do much let's just take that okay now it's sneak versus fiery confluence I should probably sneak here. I've got Demonic Tutor, two really good sneak cards. And I think Fiery Confluence is great, but sneak seems pretty awesome in this deck. I also have a lot of removal already. I have Mind Collapse, Toxic Deluge, K Command even kills Artifacts, Bone Shards, Fatal Push. I mean, Blood Tithe. Like, I, I feel like I've got a lot of removal, and sneak really adds a good element for those two cards. Plus, with Demonic Tutor in my deck, I really like having access to sneak attack. All right, and here I probably Shallow Grave. There is also Zeotora's Proving Ground. But Shallow Grave with one, two good discard outlets and two good targets, again, seems pretty important. I really hate passing the Proving Ground, but if I'm the only black-red player, which I believe is true, maybe it wheels. Let's see. This pack is probably not good enough. There's Bloodthirsty, Spellbinder, Mana Confluence, Bunnicorn, tons of white cards again. But I don't think Shallow Grave is going to wheel either, and I think it's necessary. Oh, now I'm going to take Inti. I love Inti. I'm obsessed with this card. I just think it's a busted card. And it's good with uh, Shallow Grave as a way to discard a creature. Also, Gorio's Vengeance doesn't work with Archon, so I'm not that concerned about it. I wouldn't mind the Imperial Seal, but I think Inti is quite a bit better. Oh, and there's Blood Crypt. I'm slamming Blood Crypt. I don't care what else is in the pack. I mean, I'll look at what else is in the pack. But, uh... Yeah, Molten Collapse is good. I would definitely play this card. It's basically Dreadbore, but also can snipe something else. Custodial Lich is just fine. World's Point, I guess I would take, because this is the kind of deck that could maybe go for Flash. Is no one playing white? None of the white cards got taken or the stage. So City of Traders went. Um, the card that I kind of wanted went, but I don't remember even what that is at this point. So, interesting. Uh, all right, well, I guess I am going to take... Grave Titan here. I think that's the I think that's the call. 
Pass all the white cards. Pass the Grim Lava Mancer. Yeah. Grave Titan's good with Dark Ritual, too. Okay, well, Magda came back, which I think the card I want most. Just a good two-drop in this kind of deck. And if another red card wheels, so be it. There's also Show and Tell. Show and Tell's interesting. It's pretty good with Itali and Archon. I have an Underground C, but I think I'd rather just take Magda because I think it supplements the plan I'm going for more. And also, <clears throat> I don't need to play blue. I'm... I'm I'm still happy with the Underground Sea over Rabble Master Burst Lightning pick. I don't think I'm going to miss either of those cards too much. But it's not like I'm looking for an excuse to play blue either. Okay, unsurprisingly, uh, taking Sneak meant I didn't wheel the other card I wanted. I, I'll get no remember it at this point. I just know there was a card in here I wanted. I'll take Decadent Dragon, though. I actually kind of like this card in red-black. It's a draw two plus a decent dragon. So I think that combination is pretty good. Okay, yeah, this pack wasn't good enough to, to wheel Zeotor's Proven Ground. That I remember, but I think Bloodthirsty Adversary is actually pretty good here. I've got a lot of cards to bring back. Maybe if Sneak comes back, I'll be happy. Oh, Gorio's Vengeance came back, but so did Imperial Seal. This looks more like an Imperial Seal deck. I guess I could Gorio's Vengeance back Lelia, Inti, or Magda. <laughs> Gorio's Vengeance Itali is pretty good. If I get an Atroxa, it's pretty good too. But I think I'll just take Imperial Seal. Now I guess I'll just... Actually, I'll just hate the Tendrils instead of the Hero. I, I just don't think anyone's playing white. I mean, someone might have moved in at this point. I'll take Grim as a sideboard card. It's pretty good against green decks. I'll hate a Splinter Twin. I don't care about Elspeth. Okay, so going into the next pack... I mean, this is 18 lands and 22 playables. So, <laughs> last pick Vanguard. So it's not like I'm worried about playables. I have a couple cards here I wouldn't hate to cut. Let's see what we can get. Oh, uh, okay. So there's Mana Vault, Lightning Bolt, and Emrakul. My guess is I just take Mana Vault. Fast Mana's great. Lightning Bolt's good, but I have Fatal Push, Bone Shards, Cake Command, Toxic Deluge, Mind Collapse. Mana Vault lets me turn two sneak. Turn three just cast Grave Titan. Yeah, I think that's good enough. I could wheel Emrakul or Life Death, but even if I don't, I'm not too worried. What's going to get taken? The Lightning Bolt, Teferi, Echo of Eons is probably... So it's possible that it's Emrakul, Life Death in addition to those, but someone might take Displacer Kitten, someone might want Zerda or Bobble. I have a chance of getting one of those back. And wouldn't mind another Black Red Land just because we're already so high on playables. Like, realistically, I guess I could see cutting the Deluge here just because... Uh, this deck has so many creatures, and maybe I end up cutting Imperial Seal, I don't know. Oh, this pack, I, I do like Wooded Foothills, and it's not coming back. You know, it'd be another Black Red Land, but Smuggler's Copter is so good with the Reanimate stuff, which is not even like the he most heavy Reanimate, but having the first one matters a lot, and it's also sick with Inti. I mean, that's a Pioneer combo right there. So, I mean, I guess if someone takes Leak, someone takes, nah, the Wooded Foothills isn't coming back. That's all right. We're, we'll, we'll live with that. I would like one of the good animates. It would be really nice to pick up, like, I guess Animate Dead is probably unlikely. Necromancy. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> so this pack has Gristlebrand, <laughs> Grief, Snuff Out, and Animate Dead. What a great pack for me. I'm taking Animate Dead. This is the, the aspect I'm a little short on. And as long as someone takes Balance, someone takes Tamiyo, I'm going to get one of these black cards back, and it could honestly be Gristlebrand. But even if it's Snuff Out, would be great. Grief would be great. I mean, all these would be great. So that was such a good pack for me. And that was already like two picks in. That's awesome. Okay, so that means I at least need to cut one card. Bloodthirsty Adversary, I think, is pretty good. Oh, there's a Thoughtseize. Oh, man, we are really eating today. All right, let's slam Thoughtseize. I love Under Underworld Breach. There's also a Solitude in the pack. But yeah, I think... I think I like Imperial Seal right now. I could probably take out Mind Collapse. And I could maybe take out... Bloodthirsty Adversary actually seems not bad. Casting him, K-Command, Demonic Tutor, Thoughtseize. Those are all fine. Fatal Push. I could take out Decadent Dragon. I don't want to take out any of the three big things. I think that the Mog does pretty good. Also, Magda Copter just immediately starts making treasures. You, you don't even have to attack with the Magda. So, all right. I mean, this has been a, this has been a good pack for me. For not having any, like... You know, 
10 out of 10 busted cards, this, this deck is looking really good. Oh, and I'll take Caracas here. My mana is going to be good enough, I think, that I, I can afford a Caracas. It's good with Itali. It's also good at protecting my, like, little legends, and it's good against me, so easy game. Oh, wow. The hits keep coming. There's a Dothy Voidwalker and a Bitter Triumph and even an Unmarked Grave. Honestly, I think I'm going to take Arid Mesa. I'm already cutting really good cards from my deck. Having another duel is going to be awesome. And there's a chance something like Dothy Voidwalker comes back. Underground Sea is not making the cut here. Though actually, no, I should play Underground Sea because it's free enough. It's only bad against Wasteland. And Decadent Dragon makes you cast the spells for their actual costs. So Underground Sea can help cast blue cards. Okay, so I'm once again asking which card to cut. I really don't want to cut the dragon. I really like that card. Maybe I can play 16 lands with Dark Ritual and Mana Vault. Yeah, that is a possibility. Okay, Life Death Wield. We're slamming that. Teferi didn't get taken. And Life Death still came back. Hmm. Emrakul also left, but I think that's okay. And... What do we got next? Yeah, we didn't wheel the Wooded Foothills. I think I might hate Reprieve here. I'm really not playing any of these cards, but no, j -Bro's just not playing white. Pack 2 is passing last pick Odonto Vanguards and stuff, so that makes me want to just take a land. No, I'll take Exploration. He always loves cards like that. Oh, Gristle Beezy Wield. Thought that might be the case. So did Collective Brutality, but yeah, we're slamming Gristlebrand. All right, the Dragon's out. We're just too, at this point, we're, we're becoming too unfair for that to be the card we play. I still feel good about not taking Goryeo's Vengeance. Oh man, this deck's great. I can take the Underground Sea out now, I guess. Has Also has a black red land with two fetches, so it's like pretty good mana base. Woodfall Primus, not really a reanimation card I would want. Would I play Underworld Breach? I don't think so. I don't think anyone else is going to play it either. Uh, Bubbling Muck is funny, the Black High Tide. Uh... What, what, what do I want to do here? Do I want to play Breach? There's just no way, right? Yeah. I'll just take it anyway, I think. I don't know. Uh, get, no, Containment Priest. Definitely the card I want to take here. That card's good against me. All right. Unmarked Grave came back. I'm not going to play Urtai. Unmarked Grave can get Archon or Grave Titan. Yeah, I mean, that's probably worth putting in, in my deck. And then I'll take the Zerda. And round things out. I mean, do I want Unmarked Grave? I guess I have Animate Shallow Grave and Life Death. Here. If someone wanted a Candelabra, then they successfully floated it. All right, let's get to building and see where we want to end up. All right, so this is currently 14 lands. Probably should cut a couple. So I've got four big reanimates or reanimate cards with a sneak, and then of course all the animates. Um, I like all four of these. Obviously not cutting Gristlebrand, Karkon, or Atali. And I think Grave Titan's good enough because I have Mana Vault and Dark Ritual to just cast it. It's still fine to sneak or reanimate. And critically, it gives me a second unmarked Grave target. And I think unmarked Grave is good enough too. Honestly, I might be in the realm of cutting Concealing Curtains. Maybe, maybe Imperial Seal. I don't know. I need to cut two cards. Uh, and I think like... I'm not cutting any of Sneak or any of the animates. Like, all these animates are too good. Same with Demonic Tutor. Same with, like, Mana Vault, Thoughtseize. Fatal Push, I think, is too good. Ritual, Bone Shards. I'm not cutting any of the good aggro creatures. The Blood Tithe, Magda. Like, all in Copter. All these enabled the reanimate theme and are just actually great by themselves. Same with Lele and K Command. Not cutting him, so we're, we're kind of eliminating here. Bloodthirsty Adversary could definitely be cut. Imperial Seal could be cut. Curtains could be cut. I think I want the Deep Cavern Bat. It also crews Copter, which is nice. And lastly, I think Unmarked Grave with, let's see, three Animates plus a Demonic Tutor. I think Unmarked Grave is probably good enough because it can go put... Archon or Grave Titan into the graveyard, which sets things up pretty nicely. So I have to cut two of these three cards. And that's still playing 16 land, but I think 16 with Vault Ritual is okay. Also Magda, Inti, and Blood Tithe, and Smuggler's Copter all at two. Kind of find me more lands or treasures. Yeah, I mean, I think Concealing Curtain's going to be one of the cards. And 
I think it's probably Bloodthirsty Adversary as the other one, as, as loath as I am to do it. It's supposed to be on nine creatures. No, maybe maybe I just cut the Imperial Seal. I, I really don't like Imperial Seal that much. And then if we sort by mana value, this leaves a pretty nice curve. Like, these are all giant. But I've got Copter, Blood Tithe, Magda, Inti, Adversary, can crew Copter, can cast recast some of these pretty good cards. All right. And then I'm going to play 16 land, so really uh, 12, so probably just like 6 and 6 is going to be good enough. I mean, I guess I could play one more black, but all my red cards produce treasure, so I think I just go 6-6 six, six, and then end up with 9 of each source, just great mana. 4, 5, 6, and 4, 5, 6, I had a couple to the sideboard. All right. Yeah, this deck looks great. Uh, last couple of cuts were tough, but I'm pretty happy where we ended up. All right. What is my team working with? Falcon Eyes on Blue Black has my Entomb for Echo of Eons. Oh, I like this deck. Time Twister, Echo, Puzzle Box, Shieldred with One Ring, Mana Drain, Memory Lapse, Days, Ancestral Recall, Mystical. Good mana, too, with Watergrave, Zagoth, and Troll. Pretty great. <laughs> Talisker's got a deck. I saw this one earlier. It's got Mox Jet, Mana Crypt, Swords, Snuff Out, Pest Infestation, Caretaker, a bunch of green cards. But Pluto Delta, Savai Triumph, Scalding Tarn, Silent Clearing, Spire Bluff, Waterlog Grove, Proving Ground, like a Talisman. So a lot of fixing. Basically just red, green, splashing, a good black card, a good white card, and a good blue card. So I, I like it too. We'll see how this performs. And we are up here against Quiniac Game 1. Um... Yeah, I'm going to keep this on the draw. They're mulliganing. This hand has turn two, Deep Cavern Bat, or Smuggler's Copter. Oh, interesting. Yeah, let's go turn one Mana Vault, I guess. I could play Copter. Uh, is that good? Yeah, I actually think playing... Well, no, 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 no. I, I think I'm actually going to wait because... I could get an extra Copter hidden, but I kind of want to play Lelia too. Getting to play both on turn two sounds pretty good. Hopefully I don't get my thing blown up. Okay, so let's go and not pay draw. Ooh, sneak attack isn't terrible. So let's cast Lelia the Blade Reforged. Cast Smuggler's Copter. Then attack with Lelia and exile a card that I'm no longer going to get to play. All right. I've got two pretty good threats out. Opponent's got to deal with some amount of them. Psy. Ooh, that's not going to quite do it. Let's see. If he's got an academy to follow it up, that would be scary. But as things currently stand, I still get to attack with both my creatures here. So it's not pay. All right. Let's start with Deep Cavern Bat because <clears throat> then I can crew the copter here. And I could have animated Gristlebrand this turn, but it didn't seem like a, a very good call. Because to do that, I would have had to not attack with Lele. I would have had to crew. All right, I'm missing now. Oh, there's the Academy. Okay. So I think we're in pretty good shape here, but the Talarian Academy means that Quinn has, of course, some good draws. So here we want the Lelia to resolve first, so I know what what I'm exiling for Copter, huh? I chose poorly. Uh, I will draw, and I will discard Gristlebrand here. I was hoping to hit a land with those two, two looks, but <clears throat> even without one, I feel pretty good about the situation. So you've got Academy and a, uh, a Cycling Land at hand. Hit Iteration. Well, that was a good top deck. Iteration when you've got this much mana, because Academy brings Quinn up to five mana. We'll see. We'll see. Still feel okay about my setup, but would have felt a little better if I'd drawn a land. What would be nice next turn is to be able to draw a land so I can Caracas back Psy, perhaps. We'll see. Okay, Talismans. So we have another blocker. And play Academy, most likely. And let's see what you found for that five mana. Mm-hmm. And we got 
Cycling Xander's Lounge. Okay, that's not so bad. Not so bad at all. And now, if you want to use size ability, oh, just not going to do it. Okay. That works for me. So no chumping in sacking here. Hmm, huh, interesting. All right, not going to pay. Land is not bad there. All right, let's go crew. Thanks to Deep Cavern Bat. <clears throat> Intact with both. I'm going to discard Unmarked Grave here. I don't really need that one. And once again, I'm going to exile first. Exile K Command. Okay. K Command is not bad. Well, you got to block at least Blalia. And I could animate Gristlebrand here, but I think against an Academy, I'd much rather go K Command, deal two, destroy target, destroy target artifact, deal two. Uh, I'll destroy. Guess the red talisman and deal two to the Thopter. <clears throat> and part of the reason I'm doing this is I don't think Gristlebrand is needed, especially since it can just get blocked by the Thopter. This kills three of Quinn's mana because it makes Academy tap for two less and gets a talisman off the board. This just makes it so much less likely I get like Portal to Frexiet or something like that. Something like Time Spiral would still be pretty bad, but yeah, I mean, Icar Wellspring's fine here, but. Now we're at six mana instead of nine mana. Seems meaningfully different. Especially since I can Demonic Tutor next turn if I want to. Okay, Talisman. So now you've got tons of mana into Cauldra Complete. Okay. And Sheldock. Wow, that was a good set of draw steps. Huh, all right. Uh -huh. And we're at 24. I guess we're... I'm at 23. Yeah, we're not quite at Sheldock level here. So I didn't attack with the Cauldra. Just keep the, the Lelia back. It makes sense. I'll not pay for Mana Vault again. Dark Ritual is the card I would like to draw most, I think. Blood Tide doesn't do a whole lot for me. <clears throat> and now... I can animate Gristlebrand, I'll take a bunch of damage, but that's not so bad. I could DT, what can I DT for? Um, I mean, animate dead, I guess, would save a bunch of life. Could also DT for, hmm, I guess if I had kept Unmarked Grave, I could have gotten a Archon back here. I've got Sneak as well. I also have Caracas to bounce Psy if I want to do that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I might. I kind of don't want to sack Verdant because of Sheldock as well. So this is this is an interesting interesting turn. So once again, I can DT for anything here. I can animate. I guess I could attack with Copter first and kind of see what's going on because that could change my play. I will use the ability. All right, I'll discard. Oh, maybe I can't discard Verdant because that... I'm going to discard Blood Tide, I think. I want to have enough mana to sneak next turn. Okay, going to chump here. I'm kind of glad about that. I do like the chump block. Okay. And... Life, Death, the Gristlebrand. And the problem is the Gristlebrand doesn't get damage through. So what I think I might do is just DT for Archon. I want to set up Sneak Archon and bounce the Psy and just play a Mountain. And this way <clears throat> they don't get to Sheldock yet because I don't crack Verdant. I don't take a dump bunch of damage off of... Uh, the life death, and I guess if the Cauldra attacks, I'd probably just chump. Also, Bouncing Psy just basically costs Quinn three mana, which when you want to sack Icar Wellspring and play Psy, that that actually does a, a good amount in, in, in cutting into the mana you have available. Though I suppose Psy sack Wellspring gets you right to Sheldock, so that's reasonable as well. Interesting. Um, I'm just going to block the Cauldra, I think. 
Hmm. I mean, if we get upheaval, it kind of doesn't matter. I take seven going to six. Yeah, that's fine. First strikes down. Lelia, that doesn't actually exile it, funnily enough. All right, I go to 11. Yeah, I'm just getting upheavaled. Wow, what a draw. <laughs> that That is unfortunate. Yep. Okay, <clears throat> I'm probably dead now. Well, I like the I like the spot when Quinn had no cards in hand and <laughs> uh, you know had an Academy and a Xander's Lounge in hand, but iteration into Cauldra into upheaval and third path is gonna make the things pretty difficult here. Though, I guess you didn't get to Academy yet. You're gonna play Icar Wellspring, make two tokens, and then discard. I, on the other hand. Just gonna go mountain mana vault and discard deep cavern bat, burden catacombs, blood crypt, I think. And then next turn, sneak Archon in. I'm gonna take some damage here. You can play Academy and you're up to four mana. Okay, Talisman. And Archon doesn't. It certainly doesn't end the game, but gets very close. Because it takes you down to one, and then I gain six, which is nice. And I eat three tokens, because you have to chump with the Archon after sacking two tokens. Uh, is it going to be enough, though? Well, if you're sacking two tokens, start hacking Icar Wellspring now and a token. I go to seven, I go to six. Eats those three tokens. Lotus, huh? Okay. Uh, that probably does it then. I was already, it was already drawing kind of slim, but all right, let's go draw, not pay the mana vault. Bloodthirsty is also kind of interesting, but we're not quite there. So let's see, if I go sneak in Archon, you go to four, you go to one, Discard two cards, lose three tokens. I go to 12. Yeah, I mean, I guess I don't die, so. I might as well go for it. Okay. Yeah, so. I guess I probably do die here, actually, because of the cauldra. 12, let's see, 3, 4, 5. No, I think I might barely survive. Block, let's see, 2, 3, 4, 5, wait, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. No, I take 12 off of Cauldra. All right, well, I don't think it matters too much to show the Archon and just go for it, but yeah. All right, well, playing against the Lotus Academy deck, huh? I don't like that. Are we sacking with Psy or no? We're just casting Cauldra. All right, that, that, that's going to be enough. All right, all right. Well, I liked how this was going until <laughs> until uh, Academy led to a bunch of Academy things, which that's what Academy does. Do I want Mind Collapse? Toxic Deluge seems like it actually could be good. I don't. What do I not like here? I, mean, I kind of like almost everything. I guess the Deep Cavern Bat, I think, is generally good. It just happened that I saw no spells and then a bunch of spells got played. <laughs> that, that is unfortunate. Though it is bad with Toxic Deluge. Maybe I, maybe I do just make that swap. I like Lelia. I like all the other twos. Yeah, I mean, Lotus is going to make this hard no matter what. But I think... Uh, I, I think I've got a lot of good tools in this matchup, so let's see how this goes. I think a fast start is still going to be pretty good most of the time. Uh, all right. I'll keep this on the play. I get to go turn two Magda, and then if I draw any of my discard effects, so if I draw Copter, Inti, Bone Shards, Blood Tithe, then I get to Shallow Grave and Archon, and that's a pretty strong play. So we'll see if we can get that going. All right, let's get Blood Crypt. All right, need to stop drawing lands. Let's see if we can draw an action card. 
Okay, Lorien revealed getting a, the Xander's Lounge. Hopefully it's just tap Xander's Lounge go. No, I don't like that as much. Mm, well, mine still is okay. All right. Ooh, there we go. So let's attack with this. I actually think I DT for sneak here because then I get to kind of have the best of all worlds. So let's get sneak attack and then pass because next turn I can sneak an Archon and then Shallow Grave an Archon and that's probably going to be enough. I mean, we'll see. Psy. No, oh, Psy with no uh, creature. All right, you better have Force of Negation. Oh, you didn't? All right, well, I'm going to win this game then. Boom. And boom. Discard another card. Go to three cards. Oh, I can sneak in a Tali, huh? I don't need to do that right now. I could do that at some point, but I don't think it's necessary to sneak in a Tali at this moment. All right, in comes Talisman. Draw. Let's go... Yeah, dead. All right, so that's game two. A clean little turn four sneak. And uh, let's get to game three. Mm, mind collapse to kill Psy? Maybe. Maybe. Mm, maybe I just take out Bloodthirsty Adversary because it's a little slower. I'm, I'm running a little low on Copter animators, but I think... Uh, I think having some answers, especially on the draw, is probably good. All right. Well, this hand's pretty strong. It is a little awkward that I can't him on turn two because uh, Blood Crypt and uh, Arid Mesa mean that uh, Arid Mesa can't get a black source. I'm going to pay two life here to keep up Fatal Push. It's a little awkward, but if you played a... Uh, Third Path Iconoclast or something. I would want to do that. All right, well, you get to see what's coming up. Draw. Uh, I'm going to play the Swamp, even though that gives you info, because I, I want to discard to Inti, and then if I hit a Mountain, I'll want to be able to play that next turn. Feeling pretty good about this Mind Collapse, though I guess I kind of wish, that I, given that I've drawn Fatal Push, I guess I do wish this was a Bloodthirsty Adversary. So the one weakness of the Academy decks is they tend not to have a lot of removal interaction, which is fine because they do more broken things than everyone else, right? Like when you upheaval, it doesn't matter that you haven't interacted. I will say that if you if you don't get off to a fast start with Academy, cards like Inti and Lele are very good against you, Magda. So I'm hoping I can leverage that here. All right, let's iteration and let's not hit Academy. I don't have any answer to Academy in my deck. Hit Ponder, got exiled. Okay. Well, I'm going to get to him next turn. Probably discarding a mountain. I want to keep the Arid Mesa for push, like I mentioned, and... Yeah, we'll see. Maybe Mind Collapse will be better this game, because Bloodthirsty wouldn't come out till turn five, but it would get back a him, which is pretty nice. All right, let's draw All right, another mountain. I need to turn one of these mountains into some action, shall we? Even if I don't get anything off this, I want Inti to get bigger here. Mm, okay, Grave Titan's not a very good hit. Take three. Land and him you. Hit Icar Wellspring and Mystic Confluence. Nice, I like hitting Mystic Confluence there. Four cards left, now five after drawing. Knows about Mind Collapse and Fatal Push and Arid Mesa. Psy, Master Thopterist. Into Mindstone. Okay. I'm going to attack with Inti before doing anything else. All right. I really need to start drawing some, some action here. Let's discard. And let's see what we hit. Alalia. Oh, perfect. There we go. Inti and Lelia also actually combine kind of nicely. Because now I go Arid Mesa, Crack Mesa, get one of my last mountains, actually. Fatal Push the Psy. Then cast Lelia here. And all right, we got some good action against three cards in hand. No Academy yet. Upheaval would be not too bad. Talisman is fine. 
and Cracking Mindstone. I like that. Note Talisman. All right, so Upheaval next turn will be kind of annoying. Here's where I wish I had the uh, Bloodthirsty Adversary, but actually this works pretty great. Let's Thought Seize you first, I suppose. Please be Upheaval. No, Chandra Hope's Beacon. All right, well, that would have been a good card. Send and... Again, stack it so Lelia gets exiled first. Archon, stupid. It's okay, We're, we'll be fine here. And and then I'll put the counter on Lelia. It kind of doesn't matter. They're both 4-4 four, four tramples now. Oh, I hit Magda. That I can play. Okay. Go to 7, play Magda, pass the turn, and going to need something pretty good. I mean, upheaval will would be good. They wouldn't be game over, but it would be good. Most other things would not do it. All right, well, I guess we hit the upheaval. <laughs> sure. They'd get to, without Academy, they get to go land Talisman, and I get to go land and say go. And then I guess I discard here. I think I discard Toxic Deluge because I don't think I'm going to play that. Oh, they hit Bonfire. <laughs> All right. So I would normally play Magda, but I think I play Inti now because Inti is a little harder to bonfire. Upheaval into Shelldock. That's a that's a good sequence of draws. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, oh, there's a Blood Tithe as well. Let's go. Let's go Blood Tithe actually. Because Inti. I could play Inti and get uh, and get a counter on the Blood Tithe right away if I want. I can play Lelia. I think that that's decent. I, I do have to watch out for Bonfire, like I said. Mm -hmm. And pass, huh? Land. I'm going to play the Lelia. Going to attack for six, maybe. I mean, there's that Shell Dock is active now. Gonna exile another card that I can't do anything with. And now Smuggler's Copter is not is, is gone forever. Kologon's command could be lethal. Would we hit we hit Golos? Okay. Uh, I guess that gets Academy. All right, well, I'm gonna kill the Golos with Mind Collapse. And you go to one here. And then Bonfire, and then I play Inti, I guess. Okay, well, yeah, I'm getting Bonfired for four. If I draw K Command, I win. If I draw a Reanimate spell, I win, because I can just Reanimate Lelia. If I draw a Dark Ritual, I can play both my creatures. And hopefully, hopefully something sticks here. Okay. Uh, yeah, actually, I do want to put Blood Tithe first and then Lelia in case I draw Shallow Grave. Boom. Um, I guess I play Inti and pass the turn. It's got Trample. It's a 3-3. Three, three. I think it's a little better to play. Oh, and we got there. Oof, that was a close match. I was going to draw... Oh, well, I was going to draw some good ones. But got there despite getting upheavaled a lot and uh, defeated a really sick Academy Lotus deck. Didn't draw Lotus those last two games, which worked out well for me. All right, on to round two. All right, time to battle Team J Bros on like a Just Guy deck. Oh. Well, I'm definitely going to keep this hand. It's unclear what I do... Let's start by Thought Season J, bro. And is Flooded Strand Mountain to Fairy Reprieve Loran Skydiver, huh? Again, Carnosaur. I think I just take the Reprieve. All the other stuff's kind of expensive. And basically, if I draw Archon or well, if I draw any big creature or any animate, Demonic Tutor can find kind of the other piece. If I had red mana, sneak would be a little bit more appealing. Because if I drew any creature, I could tutor for sneak. But let's just see what we draw here. Since J Bro's hand is not 
I mean, it's certainly a keepable hand. I would never mulligan it, but it's not, not, not that, not that fierce, fearsome. And because I can see the skydiver and the Loran and all that, I know that uh, I just don't play artifacts into it. Not that I have many. I just have the smuggler's copter, which I guess I hope I don't draw now and probably want to side out. Or I wait in on mana vault here. Okay, I drew life death. That's perfect. So now. I think I'm just going to Demonic Tutor here for an Archon. And I'm assuming Jibru, I mean, doesn't have a Spell Pierce or anything, but we'll see. And then the thing with Archon is I can't discard it until Jibro plays a creature, but I kind of think he's just going to play a turn two Skydiver because... He knows I know his hand and his hand. He has got Lauren, Lauren in hand. I think he's just getting Raugrin Trium here. Oh, no, he's getting Savannah. Interesting. Uh, what am I getting? I think Archon. I could get a Tali, actually. He's not going to have any creatures in play. Yeah, no, let's just get a Tali. I feel like a Tali has got some good outs. So we got Savannah, so we must have drawn a green card. Or a blue land already. Okay, it didn't play anything. All right, that's fine. We'll just wait. And next turn, I can actually just cast Grave Titan. <laughs> also, at some point, I, I assume Jabro is going to play something interesting. <laughs> no, I just all right, well. Uh, yeah, I don't really know what's going on. All right, here comes the Loran. And now I get to do what I want to do. I don't actually think playing the Loren here is that great of a play for J-Bro. Because I have a Caracas in play, so I'll just bounce it. If uh, if I don't bounce it, it's because I want to re do some reanimates, which I do. All right, so let's go. I don't care about saving Atali here, so let's go Bone Shards. Discard Atali, and then Life Death the Atali. I think he's got Swift Reconfiguration in hand, and the reason I say that is because he did play it against one of my teammates. Uh, I don't think you want to do that here. You could kind of save your Loran, but how how badly do you want a Loran in play that can tap to have you both draw? It's kind of funny. And then. I'm going to life death back the Atali. I'm clearly reanimating Atali this turn. Okay, death on Atali. And let's see what we get. All right, Lion Sash and Deep Cavern Bat. All right, that's that's some stuff. Let's do that. Deep Cavern Bat. Teferi Time Raveler. Wait, why did he sack to get Savannah? He's got Raugren Trium in his deck. That had to be a misclick. I don't think that makes any sense. Um, I think I take the Carnosaur because he can discard it to kill the bat. No, I could take... Well, if he draws a blue, he can steal back the Lion Sash either way with Teferi Time Raveler or Sea Thieving Skydiver. Actually, let's just take the Time Raveler, I think. Yeah, that one seems a little more annoying. Okay. So... Yeah, not getting blue there like is very strange to me. Which is kind of why I think it must have been an accident. All right, well, draw. I was going to ritual out a Grave Titan next turn, so that's not bad. Uh, don't really want Deluge. This hits Planeswalkers, too. Mind Collapse actually looks pretty good here. I actually don't really like Deep Cavern Bat against... Uh, oh, I want to kick out Smuggler's Copter also. Actually, why don't I put in Grim? Grim actually looked kind of nice. And then Mind Collapse. Though, instead of Grim, it's also possible I want Concealing Curtains. Concealing Curtains has some nice attack Planeswalker energy. Though maybe I just it's just a little grindier. Maybe I'll just put a Decadent Dragon. Yeah, I kind of like that. All right, game two against Jabro. I love playing against Jabro. He plays so fast. That's awesome. And we're on the draw here. All right, what do we got? Uh, this is a fine hand. This is 
Not a dream hand, but any animate. I've got an Archon in the graveyard, and I have Fatal Push and him to carry through my, through my first few turns. I'm just going to wait on the Arid Mesa for Fatal Push, fatal push purposes, because killing like an Aragorn or something is pretty good. Regal Bunicorn. Um... Yeah, let's just kill that, actually. I'm not going to tempt fate here. Oh, Demonic Tutor. Well, I don't have a one-mana animate, so let's just go him here. I got the Swift Reconfiguration and Othari. And then next turn, I can just Unmarked Grave, and then the turn after that, DT and, and animate. Land, Unmarked Grave. Let's get Archon. Past the turn, so he doesn't have Reprieve in hand. I think I'm gonna anim get Life Death here. And I also kind of need this to work because my hand is so bad now. Uh, because I could get Animate dead, but he's got Loran in his deck, and I really don't want him killing the Archon with that. So Animate 20, so I don't mind taking some damage here. All right, I took I took some damage. I got a Blood Tithe. Jero discarded a Mountain. I assume the Archon's going to get answered. Maybe a Teferi is what it looks like. All right. I'm actually going to potentially be able to hard cast. Can I draw my Haster? Oh, K Command. Perfect. Let's go. Let's kill your last two cards, huh? Discard a card. Deal two damage to Teferi. And then what, what were you saving? What were you saving there, Jabro? A Wrath of God. All right. Now I play Blood Tithe and... So this is third from the bottom, or third from the top. So my top card isn't uh, Archon. My next card is. So I could shuffle away the Archon. Oh, that was a good draw there. Because now I can cast Expensive Taste. I don't think I want to shuffle away the Archon because I can just cast it next turn. Let's play Mountain. Attack for three. And, well, I can't cast it next turn, but I can cast it the turn after. And J Bro's got a Palantir of Orthonk. Okay, I'm gonna take some damage here. I'll take I'll take a hit. I took three off a of spell queller. Acceptable. Play planes, play dragon. Um actually, before I do that, let's use the blood token and discard Arid Mesa at this point. Oh. Yeah, alright. Well, I'm glad I did that first, because now I'm gonna play this. Pay three. I'm going to recast K command, I think. I could Demonic Tutor, but I kind of feel like I don't need to do that. Because I'm going to cast Archon next turn. So I think target player, sorry, deals two damage. Destroy target artifact and deals two damage to any target. Kill the Palantir, you take two. And then I slam for six. And now I just have lethal in play as well. All right, well, that was pretty sick. And uh, I think J-Bro is pretty much dead. It's got lethal on board, an Archon coming down. Yeah, this is not gonna do the trick because we are gonna hard cast Archon of Cruelty. Boom. And that is lethal, bringing us to a pretty fast little 2-0 there. Let's take a look at one of our uh, other teammates matches if we got a good one to find. All right, no one was battling, so we're on to round three. We've got Troll Ascetic here, and this is a mulligan. No black mana, no animates. I do have a... I can put a card in the graveyard, but that's just not good enough. And this is much stronger. Honestly, let's just put back a land here. And we're going to go turn two copter, turn two... Turn two copter, turn three inti. I would have loved to draw Fatal Push there. But... I like this hand still, and definitely not discarding Archon, or putting back Archon, because we have some good discard outlets for it. Turn to Relic. Uh, I feel like we're going to get a little too far behind on the draw against this, but yeah, what can you do? I think that the biggest weakness of this deck, for what it's worth, is no, no power and no free spells, so no Fury or Grief. He couldn't take Grief Sod over Animate. It just means that on the draw against something like this, like if I draw an exactly Fatal Push or maybe Thought Seize, I could do something. But we, the way we things currently stand, 
I'm on the draw casting a two drop and it feels like it's way too slow. Like Troll's going to be able to cast a six drop here, you know. I could have demonic tutored for something, but there's nothing that I could get that would really do much for me, I don't think. I just have to hope that whatever comes out here isn't something that, you know, is just a huge problem. Hex drinker. Uh, okay. Time walk. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> Hex drinker I was actually not that scared of because Archon can deal with Hex drinker pretty well, but Hex drinker into time walk with six mana is, is probably not going to be good for me. Let's see. And then Rex Sage, my smuggler's copter. Yeah. Well, if I play an Inti here, I guess if I draw a land here, I can go Blood Tithe and then immediately discard Archon. Okay, so let's do this. Let's just get a Swamp. I don't think I need to take extra damage here. Let's go Blood Tithe. And I'm not going to... I'm not going to discard yet because there's no real reason to. And I'll probably block Reclamation Sage if I'm allowed to. And then next turn. So I guess it depends on what Matt does this turn. If I block Rex Sage and I take six, I go to eight. Archon, kill Halfling, go to 11. Yeah, I can actually beat this. If his play is animate Hex Drinker and he doesn't have something, like, or get Hex Drinker up to 8 and doesn't have something really sick, then I think I've got a pretty decent chance. I really would like him to attack with Reclamation Sage here. It's a pretty natural attack, too, because I'm not going to have a Blood Token in play to, to force the swap next turn because I'm going to use the Blood Token now. So, yeah, I don't think that's a bad attack on his part. I just really want him to do it because <laughs> of what I have going. All right, block, take six, go to eight. All right, Archon, let's see, do your thing. I need to draw a land here or an animate. All right, land, 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 land. Okay, so now I go Demonic Tutor. Here, I'm definitely getting animate dead, animate dead, Archon. I could get a Shallow Grave there. But I want to I want to try to win the game, and I think this is a pretty good start to doing that. I don't know. We'll we'll have to see how it works out. The other thing is I could also draw into another thing. Maybe I should have just gotten Shallow Grave. Maybe this was too greedy. I really was into animating it, but it's possible this is going to end up being way too greedy because I could have killed the Hex Drinker. Yeah, no, that was just a bad play. Oh, Emmer cool, huh? <laughs> All right. My greed will be the death of me. We'll see if that is literally true. Skull Clamp. Well, that's a good sign. You can't equip Skull Clamp. It has protection for everything. Um, it looks like, it looks like maybe, maybe. Oh man, I really, th this was such a bad play on my part. Honestly, the more I think about it, the worse it becomes. But I think I still would have won with these as backup, but no, this really won. I went for the extra win. Sorry, Matt, but if you rewatch this, then I played so bad there. It, it, the problem is if Matt just plays any creature, I, the Archon doesn't finish off the Hex Drinker. Like, what a crazy play to make. Well done. Well done, me. Uh, I want Mind Collapse, Grim, Toxic Deluge. I want to cut Copter against Rex Sage. Rex Sage and Anime Dead, not a big deal. Rex Sage and Copter, pretty bad. Hmm... This makes me want to cut the Deep Cavern Bat. I like Deep Cavern Bat, but when I'm bringing in Deluge and stuff, it just always seems so much worse. And I need to cut one more. I like most of what I've got. I guess I could cut Bloodthirsty Adversary. It's a good card, but... Or I could cut Grave Titan. It's not clear to me how great Grave Titan is against Hex Drinker so, and, and Eldrazi. So, yeah, let's just go big or go home. All right, on the draw here, I'm certainly keeping this hand. Unclear to me what my play is going to be on turn one. So if I had double red, I could go Mountain, Mana Vault, turn two, Inti Lelia, and that's sick. But if I don't draw a Mountain here, yeah, I think I just go Thoughtseize on one 
and then just play a creature on two. I think that's going to be better. Green Sun Zenith, Rex Sage, Draga Tree Speaker. Just thought Seize is not that impressive for me. I think I just take Green Suns. And then what I can maybe do is play a Blood Tithe on turn two. Hopefully Matt didn't draw an untapped land. Yeah, because now he doesn't get to level up the Tree Speaker yet. And then I get to... I think I'm just going to play the more controlling route and play Blood Tithe. And then next turn, after he levels up Tree Speaker, I'm going to... Oh, I guess he gets to Rex Sage the, the Blood Token. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I'll allow that. That's that's okay. And now... Oh, Atali. So I could Inti here and attack with Blood Tithe. Or I could Lelia. I think it's probably better to just Lelia here. Get Lelia going. And I'll attack with both because this Blood Tide isn't doing anything for me. Exile the Mountain. That's the mountain I wanted, but that's okay. We'll... I've got pretty good squad here. And Matt's not got the ability to cast Zealous Conscripts as of yet. Skull Clamp. Okay. Skull Clamp up the Halfling. Play no land and attack, and we're going to chump with the Halfling. Yeah, that makes sense. Get, get, get some cards out of it. Let's cast Inti first here, because now we get the Mondo combo. And actually, Talisker pointed out, because he was watching my match, pointed out a play I should have made round one against the Academy player. When the Academy player was at seven, I should have played Inti instead of Blood Tithe, because then next turn I go Lelia, attack with both, discard, exile two, and that would be seven points of damage, because Lelia is going to get going to get value off this too. All right, so I exiled a him to Turok. Oh, I like that. And I'm going to discard a Gristlebrand and hope to hit a Swamp. Oh, Fatal Push. Mm. Yeah, I'll just let you block and I'll Fatal Push the Draga Tree Speaker here after, after this happens. Yeah, look at that trample from Inti. Inti is such a good card. It's really astounding. All right, so I don't get to him, and I didn't hit a land this turn, but Inti <laughs> made this Lelia just enormous, and Matt's on three land. I think we've got the 3-0 almost in the book here, or in the bag, in the books, in the book bag. All right, I'm 3-0, Falcon Eyes 2 Talisker I'm not sure about, so let's go get check in on the team and maybe get a little matches because we cruise through these ones. All right, let's take a look at the start of the game. And by start of the game, I mean Quiniac just cast Upheaval. I don't love it. But Talisker had enough mana to float in Endurance. So let's see if this is good enough here. So Quiniac goes Island Mindstone. Talisker has Endurance out. And Noble Hierarch, attack you down to one. Oh, baby. This actually looks like this could be two Upheavals beaten. And, you know... It kind of shows where I view upheaval, where if you can generate like 10 mana or more, upheaval almost always just wins you the game. Because you get to replay, you know, maybe like a land and then like three or four or five mana worth of spells, often like talismans, and then your opponent just goes land, play a one drop, and then discards five cards. <laughs> and then you play like, you know, the rest of your hand. But if you upheaval with like one mana floating like Quinn did, that's not really good enough. And here we're going to see Psy chump the Endurance, unless Talisker even has something else. And nope, Talisker doesn't need anything else. Psy gets chumped, and uh, Talisker wins the match. And that'll actually lock it up. Talisker now is 2-0. I'm 3-0. Falcon Eyes 2 And that, that's a win in a 3-on-3. Three -three. So I want to take a look at this deck, because this is just classic Rakdos Reanimator. Rakdos Reanimator is a really good archetype. It basically combines... All the black reanimation stuff that you'd find in any reanimate deck, you know, tutors, big creatures, um, and you know, so things like rituals and hand disruption. So this deck had like dark ritual, had an animate dead, had life death, all that, with red cards, which typically provide discard. So here we had Inti, Blood Tithe. Oh, those are my only two red discard outlets. I didn't end up with uh, Faithless Looting or Bitter Reunion. 
but it also has sneak attack. And so here, the, the reanimate part of our red cards was really just, you know, these three cards, Blood Tithe, Inti, and Sneak. But of course, Magda, Bloodthirsty, and Lelia, and Cole against Commander are all just good cards. Itali I would have played even if I wasn't playing red, but obviously it's nice that I can hard cast. It didn't come up, but it, it, it could easily have. And then you also end up with a more aggressive deck. The blue-black deck is a little more reliable because it has blue like cantrips like Priority and Ponder, cards like Malcolm, draw cards, and you know, Suspicious Stowaway, all that kind of thing. But the red deck's a little more aggressive, and I really just got to say, Inti has impressed me a ton. This card, I think, is just a really high pick. It's just a really good card. And this deck, part of why I think this deck was good, it had Inti and Magda and Smuggler's Copter, though I kept citing that out because they had a disenchant. But it had three two-drops that generate value every turn they attack, right? If they don't answer one of these, it generates value. It also had Blood Tithe and Deep Cavern Bat, which help very nicely with both disrupting the opponent and, in the case of Blood Tithe, putting a creature in the graveyard, and then Lelia is just a heavy hitter. It also had Mana Vault and Dark Ritual to have slightly faster plays, though obviously a Mox would have been better. But And then it had the best reanimation target, one of the better ones in Atali, a decent one in Gristlebrand. Honestly, the, the shine of Gristlebrand has faded a little just because in the close games where you're actually taking damage, Gristlebrand's not as good. But still, it's still obviously a very ha card I'm happy to reanimate. And then it did have one life death, one animate dead, so a premium animate, and a haste animate, which I definitely should have done against Troll Ascetic. Crazy not to do that. <laughs> With Thoughtseize, one of the best cards. So yeah, this in him, so some good discard too. And just a really good deck overall. Even had Arid Mesa, Blood Crypt, and Verdant to fix its mana. So I'm glad I threw out. I got a little lucky to do so, as always. But this deck ended up playing out beautifully, and we won the draft. So broke the, the streak. I lost my last couple, so I'm glad to, to notch up a dub. That'll do it for today. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you hanging out and uh, watching me play Rakdos Reanimate. This deck is a fun deck to play. Maybe, maybe people will start believing in Inti the way I do, because I think Inti is, is the truth. All right, that'll do it for today. I will see you tomorrow. Got another draft coming, and you won't want to miss it. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel and you won't miss a single draft.